All right, and welcome to another episode of Influencer Profits. Our guest today is Karenina Jenigan. I'm really excited to hear from this woman. She is a breakthrough specialist, a success find coach. Uh, she ultimately really helps focus in on female entrepreneurs, helping them be a boss and make money like a lady, which I think is super important because so often this masculine, feminine, like how do you have that balance? and really be able to be powerful as a woman. So I'm super excited to have you on. I'm super excited we are going to share what we're gonna talk about, what comes up. I never know, this is not pre-planned, <laughs> totally flows. So thank you so much for being on today. Thank you, this is exciting. I look forward to this. No scripts. No scripts. Uh, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell us how you got started doing what you did. Like what? What's the beginning look like? What do you do now? Like, I know you're launching a course, congratulations, and you have a VIP program, which sounds super awesome. And then, <laughs> so you got that. And then like, how did you get to there? Ooh, well, let's just say that I, early on in life, I developed a need to understand nonverbal com communication and unconscious communication. Uh, I, I was born in California, but when I was six, we moved to above the Arctic Circle in Norway. So I had to <laughs> learn a different language, adapt to a different culture. And in some ways, it's opposite of the American culture, where here in the U.S., we're very used to um, achievement and being the best and standing out. And in Norway, it's quite the opposite. You're supposed to fit in. You're supposed to be quiet. You're supposed to stay in place. So I developed kind of this incongruency because I felt like I was naturally very outgoing and I had a lot to give, but I felt like I was constantly needing to force myself into a box. So, you know, over my teens and 20s, that started posing a problem. Even I think some of that uh, emotional stress also led to some of the uh, or at least were catalysts for some of the chronic conditions I have. I have two that I've lived with. Um, so I had to figure out very quickly, how do I, how do I get out of these, these kind of uh, opposing dynamics? How do I find myself? How do I find ways to express myself authentically? Um, and you know, going through, I've now had over a hundred surgeries and surgical procedures, but I've also on the flip side of that been a competitive athlete. So, you know, I, I had to figure out how to break through mental barriers very quickly uh, early on in life. And once I had figured out a real way, I turned around and wanted to help other people do that. So I became a coach and that was about seven years ago. Five years ago is when I started specializing in this uh, breakthrough process, which I have now been doing full time for five years, six almost. And that breakthrough process, I've, I've focused mostly on helping entrepreneurs because I really believe in entrepreneurship and creativity and bringing value to the world. So I've really focused on them. And some, some of them have come to me for breakthroughs in their health. So I've helped them heal chronic conditions that no doctor has figured out or double and triple revenues. <laughs> That's been really fun. <laughs> and it's been a number of things. But then finally, I, I landed on helping female entrepreneurs break through their money blocks. Nice. I love that. So one of the things we love doing, and maybe we, uh, we should have pre, I don't think we did this with you. But what can you show us? Like, give us a show and tell of like something that you would do with like a client. Oh, if you can. Okay. If I can. So do you, can I just ask some a clarifying question there? Does it, are you thinking about like a process specifically? Like any oh. sort of thing, like if you can do like something in like five minutes or so, somewhere in there that would take somebody, yeah. our, our viewer or listener or whatever it's like a teaser breakthrough a teaser breakthrough <laughs> a teaser breakthrough <laughs> yes like some sort of maybe epiphany some sort of process that you could take them through that could give them some super value okay let's see let's see okay so one of the now i'm sure you guys and your listeners have heard about limiting beliefs 
and emotional baggage and things like that that are holding you back. Maybe not everyone has heard of parts. And what that is, is we often have a part of us that says, oh, I want to go to the gym and be healthy. And then we have another part that's very opposite that says, I just want to sit at home and eat ice cream and watch TV. And we all have those aspects, but something that a lot of people don't realize is when we have these parts and they, they don't pose any threat per se, but only when they're competing for airtime at the same time. So when a lot of my entrepreneur clients come to me, they have this part of them that wants to go out there and be really successful and take risks and be bold and just ask for the kind of money that they really truly want and they feel like they should have. And then they have this other part of themselves that is like, doesn't, that, that just like, it's like the devil on the shoulder. It's like that infuses them with self-doubt that keeps saying like, you're bad for asking for money. Like, you don't know what you're doing. Why would anyone pay you? Like, you're asking for too much. You're expecting too much. You're not smart enough. Do you remember that time you screwed up in school? And, you know, so we have these two parts that are constantly battling. So that looks a little bit different for everyone. And what I would love for people to experiment with right now is like, what part of you do you have a part of yourself that really wants to go out there and be bold and successful and take the kinds of risks that you want? And if you do, what does that part of you look like? Does it look like you or does it look like someone else? And just notice what is this part of you really wanting? What is this part of you? What is its highest intention? So I'm going to get people to just think about that for a second. And then I'm going to turn to the other side and say, do you have a part of you that's self-destructive and self-sabotaging? Do you have a part of you that really doesn't want you to be successful, that wants you to stay small? And what is that part of you saying? And what does that part of you look like? So once you've kind of identified these, you can actually start having conversations with them. Now, this is not some kind of woo woo thing. This is just like flat. <laughs> we all have personality aspects and it's not like you have split personalities. If you do, if you're recognizing that you have this, there are ways to solve it. So the process, and I do this with my clients one-on-one, -on -one. it is a little bit more extensive, but what I can tell people to do in this short period of time is, identify what this the successful part wants and identify what the what the um, unsuccessful or the holding small part wants and once you can get high enough up in understanding what it is they're trying to achieve very often you'll find that they're trying to achieve the very same thing once you can find out that they're actually wanting the same thing it's kind of like that pull you often feel inside of you kind of just stops. And a way to do this on your own would be to write it out. But I can just give an example and you guys might see. So the, the part that wants you to stay small very often says things like protection and security. And, you know, my highest intention is to stay safe. And then if we dig in and like, what is it that, that this part could do if it were safe? Well, this part could go out there and ask for, for, more, for more money, or this part could go out there and be more bold if it felt safe. So then suddenly you're starting to see that really what these parts are trying to do is the same. It's just that right now they have different strategies and when you can find out that they want the same thing, like this part wants to be bold and go out there and be successful, this part would have done it too if it felt safe. So then there's this merging that happens inside. Now, what does this have to do with making money? <laughs> well, <laughs> if you have two parts that are conflicting and you have these voices that are, 
you know, these are just ways to help yourself. It's not to say that you have actual different voices in your head. These are just ways, they're pictures or ways to help yourself. So if you have one part that wants to go out there and be real and be bold and authentic and be in front of people, but it's being held back by this person, this other part, I mean, it can cause a real conflict and it can cause real stress. And that kind of stress can show up in our physical bodies and it can also show up in our relationships and even how we communicate with those we are in business with. So that's just a little example of one of the things that we can find once we're digging in to find out what is it that's holding you back from making the kind of money that you want. Is that, that's do you awesome. have any questions? Oh, that was super awesome. So it's really like, it's amazing when you're unconscious and you're conscious. It sounds like really that's what you're getting into is like your unconscious and your subconscious when they can merge together. That's really when you're going to have the breakthrough and, and open up. That's awesome. That's just this, that's def, def, definitely just a small part of it. Um, you know, most of the clients that I work with, they're really smart. They're really resourceful. So when they come to me, I already know it's not a problem in their conscious mind. It's not a problem that they don't have the training or the education or the intelligence to do the things that they want to do. They have everything they need. So that's how I know that we need to start digging into like the darker <laughs> realm that people don't visit that often. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Great. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. that so, great. all right. So right. That was awesome. By the way, I, 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 I actually just had a realization that I just want to be taken care of and loved. Uh, that, mm. Yeah. And so it, it's, and so, yeah, I see how both of those can fit. Um, so thank you. That was awesome. Um, but, uh, what about okay so for you you right now are you have higher ticket type coaching clients i'm guessing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you're launching this course congratulations thank you um, what's the next level for you like you're already kind of jump you, you're like really spiking and like mm -hmm. your business like mm -hmm. where is this going like where do you see your business in like three five years three to five years well right now the business model that i've uh, that I've adopted feels really stimulating to me because it also, it provides a ton of value and it provides me a lot of freedom. Um, and I am one of these uh, entrepreneurs who appreciates a lot of freedom and uh, being able to go and do things. So, you know, I do see a future where there's seminars involved, uh, intensives, so right now, what I offer on the VIP level, uh, the apex of the experience is the two-day breakthrough process with me uh, that is in person, one-on-one. -on -one. And what I would like to do is have a three-day immersion experience for a larger group. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a book brewing, too, that's on the topic of making money for women. <laughs> and so there, you know, I'm, I guess it's kind of the classic coach direction you know you want to have a book a course you know some vips and and uh seminars so ongoing seminars a few times a year oh but the, the most exciting thing because i love having fun is retreats so <laughs> definitely gonna do retreats nice yeah retreats are a blast yeah mm -hmm. um, so um yeah it's I, I did a retreat actually in the Dominican Republic a few years ago. Um, it was amazing. We did, um, we, we actually swam with um, sharks and stuff. Oh, wow. And uh, that was really, really, really fun. And they, they, they're not as scary as you think, um, but you, you're- Were they no sharks? You're totally not supposed to go down, <laughs> take your, your thing off and then try to swim down after one. They told you. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't, they didn't tell you that as you were doing it. But <laughs> they mentioned not to before, and I sometimes listen to advice like that, but sometimes I don't. <laughs> so your course is making money like a lady. Is that yeah? Right. So I know. Um, so what does that look like to make money? Because I, you know, I kind of mentioned the masculine and the feminine, being high performers, being able to achieve. We're like, ah, we got this. But you're saying. Yeah. 
don't necessarily have, you can let loose a little bit and still have fun. So let's talk about Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Um, well, so wealth is a physical thing that is created from the inside. And for a lot of us high performers, we tend to get caught up in the doing. So, and if you look at our society here in the US, we value, if you look at our, you know, how our work week is set up, most people work six days a week and Americans typically have two weeks off, which it doesn't make much sense, but that is kind of how it has been structured. So I, even when I started my business, I was still very conditioned from that, that I needed to have like at least eight hour days and that I needed to, you know, crank out as much content or as much, I needed to be doing stuff all the time. It was productive procrastination really. <laughs> and it's, it's, you just like do a lot of stuff, but you're not really honing in on what's important. And if you think about it, you know, now we go into a hormonal perspective, like women are just are not designed biochemically the same that men are. And, you know, you know, we're trying to put an industrialized kind of conveyor belt lifestyle onto entrepreneurs, which doesn't make sense. Like we're more like golden geese that need to be laying these beautiful eggs, but with all the stress and all the doing, we don't really produce high quality stuff. We get caught up in like, oh, I need this new thing, or I need to do this, get this new software. I need to do this new training. I need to do all these things and I need to produce, 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 produce. So I'm here to say that that doesn't always work. Now, kudos to you if you have if you are one of those entrepreneurs who are just like yeah i'm going to crank it out i'm going to work 12 15 hour days and you're successful that's awesome awesome go do go do more of that Thank you. <laughs> i'm uh, yeah i'm here to talk to those who tried that and it didn't work i'm also here to talk to those who just have so much aversion cuz they're maybe too creative or you know, they, they're like, I can't work too hard. It's, it's really about finding the center. When you're a woman, you have to honor certain cycles in your physical body. <laughs> and if you do, and when you do, the, what you produce is going to be so much higher quality. You're going to be valued much more. You're going to value yourself much more. And you're going to start making a lot more money. So the course is really about getting starting with the inside and finding out where where are things not in alignment. But then what I see there's a lot of uh, mindset and money courses out there who talk about kind of just the mindset, but they don't bring it down into into the practical. So I'm going to be doing spiritual, mental, emotional and practical work, holding these women's hands, showing them Working too hard is not, is not the way to do it. Burning yourself is not, I mean, grinding is just not sexy. Like you're not very ladylike if you are like working and like steam is coming out of your ears. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I've done it. It's not cute. <laughs> no. <laughs> but then on the flip side, there are women who are just like floppy. They just don't want to do anything. <laughs> That's not very sexy either. So I want to help those women who are ready to like embody wealth and deliver massive value to their clients. I love that. So I know you're, you have a, a time frame and you got some important stuff to go do here soon. But one question that I'd love to ask on every episode is because I think that there's real power in talking about the highs and the lows. And we've definitely talked about some highs and things that are going. Um, yeah. Uh, would be your biggest failure and I put that in quotations because I know there's really no such thing and how were you able to overcome that well my biggest fa I had a number of big fat failures <laughs> and I mean I think it's a necessary part of the journey if you haven't fallen flat on your face as an entrepreneur you're kind of not really a real entrepreneur yet <laughs> 
So just like get on with it. Like don't hold yourself back because you're going to fail because the faster you fail, the better, you know, you'll get over it. So, I mean, I had um, I, maybe one of my biggest failures was that I got involved. I was a founder of a startup uh, and you know, it seemed to be the right thing to do. It seemed to be in alignment with what I was going to do because we were going to start a lifestyle brand and then offer coaching. And, um, and I, both of us uh, founders, we come from that grinding (laughs) perspective and we ended up just working 12, 15 hour days and not taking care of ourselves. And for months, we were not even making money and we were supposed to be making money in January and June rolled around and I was broke. And by broke, I mean on all levels, like not just financially. I was, I was a shell of a human being and I could not for the life of me understand how did I get into this situation? Cause I'm a resourceful person. I I'm really skilled at what I do. How did I end up here? Well, this has to do with if you're not paying attention, if you're not paying attention to your internal signaling system, like, hey, this is not the right way to go, or you're not believing enough in your own business, which was the case with me, I I realized, like, looking back, I didn't believe that I had what it took to have a huge coaching business the way that I wanted to. So I was like, well, why don't I just partner up with someone? It was the worst idea ever. And it took me like months to recover from that. But once I did, and once I really got committed to myself, my own business and my own work, then things went in the opposite direction. Yeah. So really getting those parts aligned. I love it. That's awesome. Um, Well, thank you so much for coming on here. Where can people find more about you and find out about this course and some of the breakthroughs that you do for them? Well, the easiest thing, since my name is a little challenging to spell, (laughs) is to find me on my website, which is breakthrough-specialist.com. And you can also find me on Facebook. It's Karenna Najan again on Facebook. I'm also there as Breakthrough Specialist. Awesome. And I'll have both of those and I'll spell your name right down below so (laughs) they can go and reach you directly so they don't even have to worry about it whatsoever. Thank you so much for being on our show. Is there any, any last words you want to close with? Well, the, the, what I want to say is that if you have an idea that if you have a dream, it is possible because you couldn't have the dream if you didn't already have the resources to achieve it. And it's just about chipping away the stuff that's not working so that you can really get there. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Our listeners, thank you again for listening to another episode and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.